The 5,000 meters, a distance many are familiar with and is something you've probably tried out yourself at one point or another. There's the couch to 5K journeys, the festive turkey trots, the classic high school cross country races, or in this case, just 12 and a half plain old laps on the track. The distance has easily cemented itself as the most recognized discipline the sport of running has to offer. In the professional world though, this event has sought countless athletes trying to tackle various barriers and pacing strategies that would eventually lead them to times for someone else to figure out how to beat. So let's take it back a couple centuries ago and talk about the world record progression of the 5,000 meters. Distance running back in the 1800s was a bit different. It primarily took place in the United Kingdom, and races were often measured using the imperial system. Thus, you had races that were 5, 10, 20, even 100 miles long, so the 5,000 meter distance wasn't quite a competitive formality just yet. The earliest publications of any semblance of a 5,000 meter time are the midway splits from a race all the way back in 1822. It occurred between two runners, or known back then as pedestrians, Edward Rayner and James Betteridge. While the race was 10 miles long, the newspaper article impressively provides proper mile splits for the first three. Rayner had run the first mile in 5 minutes 25 seconds, and the second mile in 5.32. But the third mile lead is credited to Betteridge, who had come through in 5.24, giving us 16.21 for 3 miles, or about 1658 converted to 5,000 meters. As time went on, the three mile distance became a legitimately competitive discipline in the 1850s, and the Brits would knock each 10 second barrier down every so often, nearing the sub 14 barrier by the late 1880s. One of the first ratified records would take place in 1903, where Great Britain's Alfred Shrub would run 1417.6 for three miles, which converts to about a 1449. The first official 5,000 meter record, however, would take place at no other than the Olympic Games, where Hannes Kolehamainen from Finland would take the Olympic gold in world record fashion with a time of 1436.6 on July 10th, 1912. Given the three mile record wasn't even close to this conversion wise, this mark unsurprisingly lasted for a whole decade until another fin came around the corner. That man was no other than the flying fin himself, Pavo Nerme. Going into the 1920s, Nerme was a sensation in the distance running community. A rare specimen, really. At the 1920 Olympics, he secured not one, two, but three titles at the Olympic Games where he took the individual title in the 10,000 and the cross-country race, along with a team cross-country title to complete the gold medal hat-trick. In 1922, Nurmi would run in a meet in Stockholm, where he would beat second place by over a minute and a half, and set the new world record of 1435-4 on September 12, 1922. Two years later to test the waters for the 1924 Paris Olympics, Nurmi would break his own mark by 7 more seconds, running 1428.2. This is the first instance of fully recorded splits we have for a 5000 meter world record, and all things considered, they were fairly even. The first three laps were aggressive, averaging well under 70 seconds, but would quickly ease into a consistent set of 70 to 71 second laps before finishing the last one in a blistering 62.7. Nurmi would retire with nine more Olympic medals and is renowned as one of the greatest distance runners to ever touch the sport. The Flying Finn had clearly claimed the 5,000 meter record as his to keep for a while, but in 1932, another Finn, Larry Lentinen, would take the torch and would seem to take inspiration from Nurmi's pacing strategies. This time, though, 
Lehtinen's first four laps were sub-70 instead of the first three, and only two of his laps would be in the 71s. Lehtinen's kick was also just as lethal as Nurmi's, combined with the fact that he was able to sprinkle in so many other sub-70 laps that would quickly subtract second after second. As a result, he would beat the record by a whopping 11.2 seconds on June 19th, 1932, running 1417 on the dot. It was only a matter of time though before yet another Finn joined in on the action, and that was Tice Domaki. Only the 1000 meter splits are available, but once he settled in, he was as metronomic as a god, bringing the last K home in a 244, which was more than enough to break Lentinen's mark by over 8 seconds on June 16th, 1939. After this record, the era of the Finns was over, but now its neighbor, Sweden, would bring in their finest distance soldier to date, which was no other than Gunder Haig. Haig was a man with range, as he initially smashed the record in the 3000, running 809, but figured he'd capitalize off of his prime fitness with a record attempt in the 5000 just a month later. While the last few records had respectably aggressive starts, Haig was racing as if he was still lined up from last month's 3000 record attempt. With a 62 first lap and a 65 for the second, Haig's first 800 was 207, which is 415 mile pace. Still keeping the tempo hot for a few more laps, Haig eventually settled into some 68s and 69s, but his next few splits were a little all over the place. Within the last four laps, he'd run a 70, a 66, then a 69, and was only able to muster a 71 with 200 to go. However, because he was so hard-headed for the first half of the race, and the fact that his last 200 meters was 29 seconds, it was a massive cushion that allowed him to not only break the world record, but even broke the 14-minute barrier for the first time in history, running 13.58-2 on September 20th, 1942. Haig eventually broke the mile world record as well, and could have progressed the 5,000 record much further in the future. But he would be later be barred from competing as a whole when being found out to have received payments for his racing efforts, as professional running was illegal during this era. Now that the first major minute barrier was broken in the 5000 since its competitive inception, the cogs began turning regarding how close someone could get to getting under 13 minutes. Okay, maybe they weren't thinking that far ahead, but some were at the very least curious just how close they could get in due time. Haig's record stood the test of time for the rest of the 1940s, but come the 50s, and there was a whole new wave of athletes from all sorts of countries that wanted a piece of the action. Haig's record appeared untouchable for over a decade, until one man from Czechoslovakia would be the closest contender yet, and that would be Emil Zatopek. In 1950, he recorded marks of 1406, then 1403, but Alexander Onofriev from the Soviet Union came much closer being just 7 tenths of a second off Haig in 1952, becoming the second man to go under 14. After this, no one else could break the 14 minute barrier until Zatopek put himself in position to do so in 1954. During a meet in Columbus, he came through the 3k split at 823.5, which was just a tad slower than world record pace. His next kilometer also didn't help nor deter his pace, but with a 243.8 last K, Zatopek would become the third man to break 14 minutes, but this time with a new world record on May 30th, 1954, running 1357.2. Months later, he would find himself entangled in a much more stacked 5,000 meter showdown at the European Championships, but instead it would be Soviet Union's Vladimir Kutz to steal the limelight right back from Zatopek, running 1356.6. This still wasn't the end of the world record-breaking bonanza. 
1956 Melbourne Olympics weren't scheduled to happen until all the way in December, meaning athletes were still comfortably in their training phases as late as October. At a meet in London, a unique showdown between Kutz and British running star Chris Chataway would take place where a spotlight would shine down on them for just about the entire duel. But in theatrical fashion, it would be Chataway to take the lead for the first time all race, passing Kutz with about 20 meters to go and broke the record by 5 seconds on the dot on October 13th, 1954. Und da setzt Chatterby zum Endsport an, gewinnt an Boden, zieht gleich und schemenhaft geht er an Kutz vorbei. Mit 13 Minuten 51,6 läuft der Engländer neuen Weltrekord. Despite this being Britain's first world record in the event in over 50 years, Kutz had actually taken it back just 10 days later by 4 tenths of a second, but not without Shandor Riharos from Hungary stealing it right back a year later also beating it by four tenths of a second. Kutz would steal it back for his third world record in the event, only for Haros to put his foot down, breaking it by over six seconds this time just a month after. Gordon Peary took the record back to Britain once more with a 13.36.8 in 1956, and this record was especially unique. Not only did he manage to beat Kutz this race, but his last 800 meters was 155 flat, and his last 400 was 55, the fastest closer we've seen by a landslide thus far. Peary also said he had never even replicated this speed during speed training, making this mark all the more fascinating. But of course, Kutz could not help himself but to snatch it back one final time in 1957, running 1335 on the nose. So in just three years alone, the 5,000 meter record was broken nine times and by 22 total seconds, with Kutz being responsible for almost half of them. Due to such a colossal drop in such a condensed period of time though, many would struggle to threaten this mark even remotely well. Some had come quite close, but it eventually fell into another slumber. That was until a man named Ron Clark got a hold of it. Australia's Ron Clark had the season of a lifetime following his bronze medal at the Tokyo Olympics. It all started during the tail end of 1964, where he broke the three-mile world record but just a month and a half later, had finally tackled Kutz's eight-year-old world record in the 5,000 by two tenths of a second on January 16th, 1965. Two weeks later, he lowered it by another second to distance himself just a little more. However, once the more competitive part of the season approached, Clark was in top shape and was running the race of his life. With a 4.17 mile, and a 4.23 second mile, he was on pace to run 13.28. As the laps got slightly faster over time, these quarters would chip off second after second, where he would eventually finish in a time of 13.25.8, becoming the first man to get over the 13.30 hurdle. After this barrier had been shattered, another new country had quickly entered into the mix where Kenya's Kipchoge Kano beat it at the end of that year, running 13.24.2. Clark snatched it back one final time for his fourth record in the event though, running 13.16.6, comfortably past the next 10 second barrier. This record in particular might be the first evidence of a formerly paced race for a world record attempt, or in other words, someone who only runs a portion of the race with the intention of dropping out later. In the IAAF notes under Clark's time, they cite an athlete specifically dropping out at 2,500 meters, more or less implying that Clark was taken exactly halfway through at a specific pace by another athlete. From here on out, designated pacers would show more presence in 5,000 meter record attempts 
as time went on, and also brand new talent would emerge that would transform the event beyond what anyone thought was feasible. Before that though, let's talk about a few more times, because soon enough, things are about to get pretty out of hand. Clark's records simply could not be matched for the rest of the 60s, as those at the top of the endurance food chain wouldn't even come close until the 70s rolled around. David Bedford from Great Britain would fall a bit shy at the AAA championships, but the one who would truly be capable of tackling such a task would be no other than the recent double Olympic champion and the 10,000 meter world record holder himself, Lasse Viren from Finland. Just a days after his legendary double at the 1972 Olympics, Viren and Bedford would duke it out for what appeared to not just be some good old competition, but a world record attempt at that. The kilometers were as consistent as they could get, and as Viren cruises to a victory well over Bedford, the Olympic champion becomes the world record holder for the first and only time in the 5,000 on September 14th, 1972. Of course though, the record had to fall just six days later by another three seconds as Belgium would grab their first record in the event with Emil Puttimans running 13-13 at no other than his home capital. Following a five-year hiatus from the record, Dick Quacks from New Zealand would lower it by a tenth of a second in 1977. And soon after, NCAA legend Henry Rono would also lower it by seven more seconds, once in Berkeley during his NCAA eligibility, and another in 1981 in Norway. Now being a little over six seconds away from breaking 13 minutes. 1982 would be the year though, where we do thankfully have preserved extensive footage of a 5,000 meter world record. British runner Dave Moorcroft had been coming off a sort of rough patch the last couple years in terms of training, but would seem to finally get his footing, especially during this race at the Oslo Bislik Games. Moorcroft had been dropping 61 to 62 second laps on multiple occasions in the beginning stages, and by 3200 was on pace to 1303. Despite front running a majority of this race and having no one to push him, the last 400 he was able to channel produced such a deafening crowd that the world record was no longer a concern anymore, but rather breaking what would likely be the last major minute barrier to ever exist in this event. He is coming on and on and on. No slacking at all, and he could be on for that world record. David Markoff is pouring it on. It's a tremendous run. He's inside. He must get it. He's well inside. He smashed it. Wide open. He's taken the biggest bite out of it that we've ever seen in modern time. Closing stage is such a lonely battle. But he just got better and better and stronger and stronger. Dave Moorcroft was just 41 hundredths of a second away from the elusive Sub-13 Club. A 29-11 last 200 was all that Moorcroft could muster to just fall shy of the barrier, but his fantastic pace overall was more than enough to make the commentators manic, the crowd as loud as could be, and for Great Britain to just revel in the glory of being the holders of yet another distance running record just like they were known for doing in the 1800s. 1259 was no longer a myth, and others got to work trying to get as close as they possibly could, especially with this precedent. One man would get so close, in fact, that he not only managed to break the world record while still not going under 13, but broke the previous record by the closest margin ever seen in the sports history. may well have gone. Quick word from Ron Pickle. Well, just to say, David, in Nice, he lost the world record. Said Awida from Morocco would dethrone Moorcroft's record 
by one hundredth of a second on July 27th, 1985. Aouida wasn't done just yet though, as he would attempt again in 1987 with the help of a couple pacers. Although, the pacers seemed to be quite inconsistent, as the deviations between 1,000 meter splits were all over the place for the first 3k, and the 4th k was the slowest one by far once the pacers left, putting him at a predicted time of 13.03. With an increase in stride as the bell lap approached though, there seemed to be a fire still burning that convinced him it was still possible, but with the help of the crowd, and some Moroccan magic, Saeed Aouida would change the course of the 5,000 meter world record forever. Twelve fifty-eight thirty-nine. What is very likely the last major minute barrier in the five thousand has finally fallen victim. The shaky pacing combined with being well behind the world record with four hundred left, none of this mattered to Saeed Awida. The new era of paced races had been finally recognized as a legitimate strategy, even if the paces themselves weren't exactly smooth sailing at times. From that day forward, many would squabble for their seats towards a prestigious club like this, but all would actually fail for the rest of the 1980s. Even the 90s were looking grim, with some coming heartbreakingly close in the end. One athlete would prove to not be just worthy of such an accolade, but would be revered as one of the most consistent and dominant athletes to ever touch a track in the long distances. His name was Haile Geber Selassie. Haile Gerber Selassie is an East African talent hailing from Ethiopia who got his start at a random 1500 meter school competition in 1987, soon to quickly climb the ranks of becoming a world junior champion in the 5 and 10,000. The RC province native became the world champion in the 10,000 at just the age of 20 and had a silver medal in the 5,000 as well. During this time frame, he had dropped 30 seconds and 33 seconds between the two disciplines, both of which were top of the line marks on the all-time list. In 1994, Gerber Selassie would be making his season debut at the Adrian Pollen Memorial Meet. Contrary to Aouida's last record, this was actually just your standard elite 5000 meter race with no pacers. The first lap was a bit hot as usual but it eventually eased in with the first 1600 at 415. After 2k, Gerber Selassie makes the pass to the front, but strangely enough runs one of the slowest laps of the race right after. Eventually he would bounce back with some 62s, but then revert it back to a 64-7. With a little over a k to go, it's only him and Ethiopian teammate Worku Bakila. And as Gerber Selassie commits to a faster stride, his compatriot lets him go and will now be front row spectating what was all of a sudden a world record attempt now. A 61 ensures, and then a 60 follows right up. On pace to run under 13 if he maintains this progression, Gerber Selassie lays down one more move that would put him in the history books and would lay the groundwork for what would be something special down the line. Record run 57.4. I don't think Gebris Lassie's going at that speed, but remember, he only needed something around 59 at the bell. He's driving down the home straight now. 40, 30, 20 meters to go. Gebris Lassie takes the world record. He smashed it. 
12.56.95 by the Ethiopian and it's goodbye to the era of Sayed Awita over 5,000 metres. Jos Hermans punches the air and that is not, no more than the man deserves. He's put on a great meeting. Even though Gerber Selassie broke the eight-year drought the record suffered, another runner from East Africa would steal it right back, except this time from Kenya. Unfortunately, no footage is available, but this race was monumental for the 5,000. Not only was the world record eclipsed, but three people in the same race broke 13, and it would be Kenya's Moses Kip Tanui, the 3,000 meter steeplechase world record holder to claim another event's title running 12.55.30 on June 8, 1995. Just as quickly as Kip Tanui celebrated as the only man to hold these two records concurrently, but Geber Selassie raised Kip Tanui with a mark that frankly can't even be described with splits or a proper buildup. It's really a time that just needs to be shown in its most raw form. Look at the way he's cruising around that bend now. Coming into the home straight, that whole of the crowd have been up on their feet for three or four more laps. Here he comes. This is history in the making from Haile Gebri Selassie. The old world record, 20, 12.55. He's decimated it by around 11 seconds. If we hadn't just seen it with our own eyes, we would not have believed it. 12.44. Behind him, the rest come in like mere mortals behind the god of the track tonight. 12.44.39. The largest jump in time we've seen in centuries would happen when people thought the event was slowly becoming more and more optimized. It was just truly a once-in-a-lifetime improvement to watch unfold in real time. According to the IAAF, if you took his best 200-meter splits and smashed them into a 3,000-meter race, it would have tied Henry Rono's world record in the 3000 from 1978. Just a remarkable feat of speed endurance supremacy that probably had other athletes wondering, how in the world do I match this if I want to be remembered in this event? And so, others got to work. Salah Haiso from Morocco ran 1250 in 1996, but Daniel Komen from Kenya not only ran 1251, but 1245.09 that same year to come ever so close to what should have been a long-standing mark on paper. This, of course, set the stage for quite possibly the greatest 5,000 meter race showdown ever seen. Nos quedan los 5,000 metros, ya que hay un duelo increíble entre Gele, Gebre Selassie y Daniel Komen. El campeón del mundo de los 5,000 metros frente al campeón del mundo de los 10,000 metros. With multiple sub-13 runners in this race, and with no championship title to force anything tactical, something phenomenal had to occur by this virtue alone. Pacing duties would be a little conservative though, as a 506.5 through 2K would have them at 1246 pace. As soon as the pacer drops off, Komen takes full control and starts to inch towards the sub-60 zone for the following laps. And a few laps later, the pack would be whittled down to Komen, Gebre Selassie, and Kenyan Paul Tergat. With Komen and Gebre Selassie duking it out going into the final lap, a sub-58 would be required to pull the record off. As Komen desperately tried to finish the race and to just secure the win, Gebra Selassie was holding back a gear so jarringly powerful that he would execute what is quite possibly the greatest world record kick ever seen in any distance running event. In the Tigrun Stadium, the banners of Ethiopia are waving. Look how the crowd is vibrating here in Zurich. No one is the best public in the world. There comes the attack of Gebra Selassie. How he has broken Gebra Selassie. Gabriel Selassie, claro, 
está esperando hasta el final. Come luchando, intentándolo. Y atención a la marca, porque el récord del mundo está en 12.44.39. Sí, sí, el el récord del y mundo. Y yo creo es seguro. que va a caer, ¿eh? va a caer con toda seguridad. Dele Gebre Selassi. Ahí está, el tercer récord del mundo. 12 minutos, 41 segundos, 86 centésimas. De los 13 minutos. Y vaya carrera que hemos visto. Gele Gebre Selassi, ustedes, los amantes del atletismo, le vieron batir el récord del mundo de los 10.000 metros. 55.2 was Haile Gebre Selassie's last 400 meters. Not only that, but his last 200 meters was recorded at 26.6, which was faster than Wilson Kipketer's last 200 during his 800 meter world record that same day. Sure, they're not directly comparable, but still a jaw-dropping statistic nevertheless. This kick is one of the most beautiful displays that illustrates the true difference between a world record contender and a world record holder. Komen's 1244 was still otherworldly in the end, but Gebra Solasi's finishes were a one-of-a-kind staple that would be near impossible to be. But what if a deadly finishing blow wasn't required for once? What if someone ran a 5000 so diligently that they could break the record through sheer metronomic prowess? Minuten und nun ist er drauf und dran, sich die 5 km Weltbestmarke zu holen. Das sieht alles sehr sehr gut aus und das wird klappen. Daniel Komen bleibt unter der Marke und bleibt sogar unter 12.40. Was für ein Athlet. Was für ein Athlet. Martin Kaino und alle Assistenten, die ihm geholfen haben, sind dabei. Moses Kiptanui, sein Coach, hat ihn erwartet. With the help of multiple pacemakers, Coleman was diligently paced through 3K with one consistent split after another, and when by himself had even gotten slightly faster throughout for a very calculated progression, resulting in the first sub-12.45,000 on August 22nd, 1997. This was the first example of a majorly successful pacing plan. But Gerber Selassie drew inspiration from this and decided to try it out for his own during his season opener in 1998. Surely enough, Komen was looking to get a taste of his own medicine, as while the stability in Gerber Selassie's splits weren't as present, his iconic kick would be the key ingredient yet again to take the record by less than half a second on June 13th, 1998. as if he's really going to push it, but uh, can he do it? Gebra Selassie, he needs, well, about a 57, 58. Highly Gebra Selassie glances across into the home straight. It beckons, so does the finish line. So do the fans just beyond the finish line. Everybody on their feet, we're holding the stand to see him coming home. The clock is ticking away. 33, 34, 35, 36. He's so, so close. In the battle between the two countries, Ethiopia would ultimately get the last laugh. Gebra Selassie's identity as a brutal finisher would not just reward him with one record after another, but he would also go on to become one of the most revered athletes, if not the most revered track athlete in the distance running world. Coleman would also retain a similar status with many of the fastest times ever to grace the sport. With this, the golden era of 5,000 meter times seemed to have run its course. As for the rest of the 90s, almost no one was cracking 1250. And if they were, 
it really wasn't by much even in the 2000s. In 2004 though, Ethiopian Kenanisa Bekele would break the indoor version of the record running 1249.61, and would be granted an opportunity to run fast at the FBK Games. Paced through 2K, a 505 would put him at 1244 pace. At 3K, his estimated pace had now fallen two more seconds to 1242. As the quarters methodically clicked off slightly faster and faster, Bekele actually only needed a sub-60 for the last quarter. Not only would he fulfill this requirement, but he would set what no one realized at the time was potentially the last world record anyone would ever see in the 5,000. Kenanisa Bekele's world record in the 5000 was one of many amazing things he did for the sport. Just five days before, he broke the 10,000 world record as well, and eventually retired as the most decorated and accomplished distance runner in history, displaying a range of accomplishments no one has come even close to rivaling to this day. Fast times in the 5 and 10,000 had also become sort of a lost art, partially due to the shift towards very tactical races in championship events. Mo Farah from Great Britain can arguably be credited as the man who temporarily changed the entire meta of how these races were run, as virtually every championship race came down to a blistering last 4 or 800 meters, forcing everyone to hone this craft as much as possible. Over a decade went by after Bekele's record, and no one was close. With the help of some emerging talent, combined with some interesting technology, perhaps this was the perfect storm that would propel the right athlete to break what some thought was a near-perfect record. While super shoes were becoming the hot topic to talk about in the late 2010s, only to officially hit the market a couple years later, super spikes were making waves in athletics as well. In layman's terms, these were built with certain specifications and material that would increase your running economy by a notable percentage, which in this case was a few percent. Coincidentally, there were also articles popping up about a new revolutionary way of pacing races, and that would be wave light. Basically, you have hundreds of LED lights circling around the railing of a track, and you can program it to go at a specific pace for however long you want. The implementation of these were very niche at first in the late 2010s, but they were soon going to make way to international tier races more often. Sebastian Coe, the head of World Athletics, welcomed the concept of wave lights greatly, as they were soon to be adapted to races in 2020. One of these events would include Joshua Cheptegei from Uganda, someone who had just recently broken the 5k road world record by 9 seconds, Monaco, a home to the Diamond League track series, and a track statistically known for producing fast times, would prescribe three separate pacers for Cheptegei, and there would be wave lights as well, so any risk for pace deviations were essentially out the window. For the first lap, a 60.7 would ease Cheptegei into the new setup, and eventually would come through the first kilometer in 231.87, over a second ahead of Bekele's record already. Aside from one lap, Cheptegei continued to stay under 61 seconds for every quarter, even to the point where he had a healthy 2.2 second lead now over Bekele. Cheptegei couldn't get too comfortable though, because Bekele's last lap was a 57.8, meaning that if his 60 second laps were on the higher end, he'd be just out of range and would be forced to kick hard in the end. 
Thankfully for Cheptegei, his 60-second laps would be on the lower range, and with a sub-60 on the penultimate lap, all that would be required was a crisp, clean sub-60, and the most iconic distance running record would officially be overruled by a new generation. grimaces and looks mortal but there 12.35.37 the world record has been broken 12.35.36 I didn't think I'd see that world record of Kennedy Sebekele broken for many a year yet 12.35.36 is currently the fastest 5,000 meters ever run in the history of athletics with a confident finish a confident smile and was even logged on social media sports app, Strava, this time was emblematic of the effective combination of proper pacing, technology, and of course, the sheer talent and dedication required to even run this fast in the first place. Looking a Bekele record dead in the eyes for that long is really no small feat, and Sheptikai would soon dethrone the 10,000 meter one in October 2020, becoming the new gatekeeper of the track distance elite. Cynics will argue that shoe technology and pacing lights have shown to be too much of an aid that makes these records feel inauthentic in a way, and to some credit there has been plenty of speculation that pacing lights do produce legitimately ergogenic benefits, and the same goes for super shows. However, Track and shoe technology have progressed so far even in Bekele's era too. So at that point, we'd simply be drawing a very ambiguous line trying to argue how authentic X record is compared to another. Not to say there isn't one, but it's a lot more speculative and nuanced than most people realize, especially since there aren't other factors we're even considering. In the end, Joshua Cheptegei is a once-in-a-generation talent that dethroned a previous generation's GOAT's record twice in one year. And if that's not enough grounds to give him all the credit in the world given no one else has come close to this day, then I'm not really certain what is. Overall, the 5,000 meter world record is one that saw a great deal of unique innovations throughout the last couple centuries from mid-split recordings from longer races, to aggressive anaerobic pacing styles, to having other people do some of the race for you, all the way to pristinely run events that were designed to break records and to properly utilize the best talent there is to their utmost fullest potential. At this point, the pacing part of the 5000 has been broken down to an exact science. What we have left now is who can get the most fit, and maybe in the future, what type of technology will allow runners to maximize their running economy beyond the scope of what we know right now. Until then though, this has been the world record progression of the 5000 meters, and take care.